Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tonight, we got a new body for our TRX4M in from Traxxas, part number 9712. This is the Land Rover Defender body in its raw form. Comes with all the little parts and pieces inside. Let's check that out. Okay, so inside the bag, you guys, we get, of course, the body, the roof, small deco kit, hardware pack, of course, some new nice uh, individually wrapped uh, windows so they don't get all scratched up, and your little light bezels and bucket pieces and such, um, very cool. Full roll cage and roof rack kit in there. And then the lower half of the fenders, um, which is also separate from the body, which makes painting this super easy. No masking involved. Paint this whatever color. You want a different color roof, paint that. And then we can respray these in matte black down low. And then we can detail up these other parts and put it on there. Anyhow, um, it's a nice looking truck. The body comes factory. This one's pre-molded in the red, so it's that red color all the way through and through. Uh, these ones done in the white, it's going to be nice, we can sand this out, we can add a little bit of scratches, a little bit of beating up on it, not too rough, just kind of roughen up just a little bit, and then we'll do um, a heavy weathering on top of the paint job. Um, we are going to start with the body on this one with a Tamiya TS33 Dull Red, always a choice color to start with. Uh, when you're doing the weathering paint jobs use your matte colors so your weathering uh, other medias have something to bite into as um, these leave a very porous finish where a gloss paint will leave a shiny finish and um, nothing will stick. <laughs> okay anyhow oh and the roof we're gonna do in a matte white and we're gonna do some sanding through and stuff like that so First up is to go wash this all off, and then we're going to sand it down with 600 grit sandpaper. And you do need to be careful not to take off these little rivets and such like that, as the body is aluminum and uh, riveted together and such. Um, we're not going to be doing rust on the body because it is a aluminum. Uh, they do have some corrosion, uh, but it's such a small vehicle putting a little bit of corrosion here and there. It's something we can just add on to the surface. There's no point really trying to make the holes and such we do like on the 10 scales. So, okay guys, next day, welcome back. Truck looks a lot different than when we left it. Uh, we applied the paint as we were talking just a few seconds ago in the video, but um, we had chopped the back, kind of made a pickup style. We figured there's no point having two of these things. Uh, ultimately, when this thing gets released, we're gonna buy the demo model from Eliminator. So uh, we don't need two D110s, we made the D110 pickup. I did a little bit different and kind of added a little bit of extra material there, gave it more cab space, a little bit shorter bed. I think it looks pretty cool like that. Uh, we chopped the cage out, all that stuff. But today, that's not what we're here for. We are here to do a weathering video. That's why we have the matte paint. I went with the, it's a, it's a decent color, uh, but just wait a few seconds, it'll look a lot better, so. Uh, we decided to do this one in a manner that everybody can do at home. Uh, I just want to show you guys a simple way to do weathering, make it look good for cheap. We're not going to use even, we have our Tamiya panel line accent that we like to go to. We're not going to use that today. Just so if you guys want to do this as a side project, you can. So I want to mix that paint up really good. Okay, so you're gonna need some base materials, some thinner and some acrylic paint. It does not have to be Tamiya, but as you guys know, we recommend Tamiya products for everything. So we're gonna use Tamiya Acrylic XF1 Flat Black Paint. You're gonna to wanna to use a matte paint so it doesn't leave a glossy one, uh, run, but you can use a glossy paint to do like runs with some thinner around like if you had oil leak and such but that's more advanced stuff it's simple so some thinner and some paint and a little tiny 
uh, mixing cup or whatever you're going to use. So um, you want to use like. a good amount like 200 to 1 ratio so we're gonna fill this cup up halfway I'm gonna use the brush to make sure everything's mixed up in there really well get it dirty and then pretty much pretty much wash it off in there so you're left with this black dirty thinner water Simple, right? So we don't know if that's enough, but we'll do a little bit of a test on the vehicle. It looks good. This was a orange brush. Now you can see it is gone kind of brown. So it's kind of looking to me like that might be the right amount to start with. Now what you're gonna to want to do is do a test patch, see your color. So you brush it on nicely. I just did this corner here. Probably should have did it on camera for you guys. So, and then kind of roll it around to the edges. Let the dark kind of gather on the edges. That's where it gets darker in real life. So we want to let the darkness kind of hang out there, but not too much. Okay, so you want to just kind of get that on there, kind of move it around, let that dry. Sorry guys, I hope the lighting is good enough to see. It's kind of tough working with a dark color body so yeah so test it looks good now what we're gonna do is cover the entire body I'm gonna work my way from like I'm gonna put a heavy bead into this edge here and then let that kind of roll over and kind of cascade down to give it kind of like the weather dirt was hanging there that washed over look you want to keep mixing up your thinner because it will just separate it won't just hold the pigment in it so Now, as you get a whole coating on the body, you kind of go whichever direction, but as it starts to dry, you kind of want to start to run in a downward gravity direction. So all your streaks and stuff like that start to appear in a downward direction out on the side of the hood, like down from the center of the hood out like this, down the middle of the front, same thing with the fenders, kind of put those in there in your first layer. So those will kind of, those brush marks, you won't see them, but they'll actually be dried in a thinner like that. And your next ones will start to follow that, so. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. We'll be back here in a few seconds. Okay, so as it's drying to get an extra little added effect, you get these like water droplet little dealies on the hood. Sorry guys, I hope you can see this. Uh, Jesse could probably clean it up in editing. Um, you get these little, things like that so anyhow take some more and you can brush the tops of those open and you kind of get those little layered kind of weathered kind of pockmark with a lighter color underneath there we go just like that kind of continue head around do the same thing Now you're gonna to wanna to continue to work in a downward gravity driven direction of all your brush strokes, keep them working downhill. Now, there's no right way, no wrong way, guys. Um, after this is fully dry, you can go through. I started adding another layer to this door over here. You can go through and do as many layers as you want. Uh, what I recommend is kind of like one or two layers, and then we're going to go hit it with a layer of flat clear, and then uh, we'll start to do this again with another uh, little bit of a different color mixed in there on top. So 
Um, I'm gonna let that dry and then we're gonna go spray that with flat clear and then we're gonna bring it back. Okay guys, now that is all dry, where we did that brushing away where those bubbles were, I'm gonna take some silver paint before I go put the flat clear on. I forgot to tell you to do that before. And I'm just gonna brush in little areas like we've done here with some flat silver. It doesn't, now you, because we're doing a flat clear, you can use whatever silver you have. I'm using flat aluminum as defenders are aluminum, not steel bodied. So, um, the trick for doing that is you want to put some on your brush and then you want to do dry brushing. So kind of dry off all the excess paint on the tip and then lightly come in. Get an angle here I can work at, you can see. Lightly come in and then just add the light little bit of silver in there. So you can still see a little bit of the red through it and the light color underneath to kind of back it up. Just like so, a little one down there. These are gonna get tinted after, so it'll kind of all fit the part, but. So kind of go through, get a bunch of little ones like that on there. They start to look pretty cool. And then, yeah, just kind of use your own feel for it and kind of get it going. I'm gonna do that throughout the body, and then we're gonna uh, jump back in after we get that cleared, and then we'll do another uh, wash over top. Okay, there we go guys, another layer of flat clear over top to kind of lock in that layer level we've done there. So we've got the silver, you can see it's starting to really thicken up into the uh, door lines and the gaps in there. And that's just using some really super thinned out black paint now. So um, Now you can add um, some like dusting and overspraying and stuff, but if we're going to keep that for more advanced techniques. I just wanted to keep this a basic video for you guys to put it together. So. Um, I might do another full kind of black coat everywhere on it. It is looking really good. Um, I might just hit it with another layer. I'll probably do one more wash and then one more flat clear. Uh, with the flat clear, you don't want to go two layers of flat clear, flat clear over top each other or they start to turn into kind of like an off color. It doesn't really work that well. So it's best to do a layer of flat clear if you're not happy. Sand it down or at least paint over completely with um, like a thinner or a a wash coat like this and that way when you apply the next coat to it they're not stacking the coat which gives you that funny um, kind of a color change it, it almost kind of makes like a purple color if I remember which is sounds really weird but that's just how it works out so um, I'm gonna put a little bit more on this and then I think I'm just gonna do the hood a little bit more the size looks really good the hood looks a little light in places so especially like back here and such we're gonna get some on there Another full coating and let it kind of sit a little longer around the hinges. There we go, that looks really good. I don't want to roll it around too much. I want to keep it nice and flat sitting at the edges of the hood line there. Um, I'm going to let that dry uh, pretty much just like it stands right there. Maybe I'll bring this right over the front edge so you don't have a weird look there. And yeah, in the meantime, guys, I went through and I spray painted all of the black plastic parts in a matte black so they look not molded plastic, but as they finished, uh, you can go through and add a bit of uh, uh, weathering onto those too. You don't have to. Uh, we'll probably do the fenders and the bumpers, but uh, not much else on there. But um, just for now, focus on the body, keep it simple, nice, cheap uh, weathering job. You guys got another coat of. Um, Dirty wash on there. I have clipped the fenders on. Now I'm going to go to the paint booth. I'm going to use a slightly advanced technique, but it's something you don't need to spend much money on. It's just a, a spray technique. We're going to lightly give it an overspray of some dirt and di um, dust colors. Uh, we're going to use some like tans and some light gray and just give it a very light dusting. I want the fenders to be on there so they get a little bit of color on them too. Uh, you don't want to spray close. You want to spray from like three feet away just give a little pss, 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 just little tiny squirts and just kind of let that fall onto it uh works good if you have a fan blowing on the vehicle and you can spray it into the um the the air from the fan and that will help put it on so they look pretty good uh we have a paint booth in the other room we're going to spray it with a nice flow so we'll set this guy up on the rack in front we'll spray at it and that will bring it onto it so i'm um, sorry for the camera work guys i'm just filming by myself right now so i'm um, gonna go take care of that we'll see you back in a few seconds 
Okay guys, there you go, looking fantastic. That light little dusting kind of ties it all together. So there you go, super simple. You can do that with things you have laying around. I got one of the headlights popped in there. Make sure you get all the pieces you do in matte black separately or put them on, do them however you please, just do it after. Um, another thing I'm gonna show you guys, windshield. If you wanna do the dusty kind of trails, windshield wiper marks for the windshield, what I do is take a piece of zip tie and you can just measure the height of your glass of the windshield by kind of lining this guy up in there. Um, you don't want to go right to top to bottom, you want to be a little bit down, a little bit up. And you kind of just picture the path it would go on, mark it out, and then I actually found the spare tire on the back is a nice radius for that, so we're able to use that to draw that in. And we'll cut everything away, leave those, make sure you cut the round part on the bottom spray that all flat clear the windows and we'll put that in so okay guys we got the roof out of uh paint unfortunately um there was a nice little detail line of rivets here and down here um we tried to maintain having them in there but unfortunately we just had to get rid of them we left the ones on the front they're nice detail but once you put the rack and such on top you kind of don't notice that so anyhow uh this is pulled in a white plastic i'd sprayed it black from the bottom i need to clean up some of this glue on there um it's kind of atrocious but whatever <laughs> um, we sprayed it black from the bottom and then we're gonna go through brush paint that old black after just to kind of make sure it all works and I like to paint inside the uh, tops where it's visible just with a brush and black paint so we'll get into that I'm just showing you the outside for now but anyhow I like to take some 600 grit sandpaper and give this a nice weather look it's gonna have a lot of like wind and scrapes you know moving back in this direction and nice thing to do is on the edges Kind of bring it down to the primer now it is white underneath so you don't want to go too low into the primer or else you end up just making it white again so you want to kind of just darken up the edges and that's just going to simulate age and wear on it and then we're going to give it another wash but i've added a little bit of flat earth color or a light beige or whatever remember use a flat color so um, you can use a light brown, beige, whatever you got kind of kicking around, sand color, you know, all those. Could be just brown, just use less of it. A little bit of white mixed in, you know, have fun with it. So we're gonna get this guy all scraped up, kind of in a moving back direction like this, like it would be. Just from like wind moving over it, you know, wind and water and crop. Tree branches. Tree branches, there we go. Yeah. Other things you hit on the road. Okay, you can see we're starting to get some nice wear right there. It's looking like it's old. We get that corner kind of starting to look like it's peeling. It's looking good. Now we used a matte white paint. You could do these rivets across there, get those. Boop, boop, boop. Looks good. Predominantly moving a backwards direction. Nice straight strokes. Don't keep pulling off one way, so. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we cut it, you guys, we uh, used CA glue, and then we uh, did the. Uh, we tried out for this epoxy putty from Tamiya. We picked it up at Eliminator RC. Uh, very cool stuff. It's a little bit more toxic as Tamiya likes to do. Kind of comes in this two-part like bubble gum. Don't don't chew on it. But you cut off equal amounts and you roll it together, and you just keep rolling it out kneading it over, rolling it out, rolling it out, and just kind of getting it all nice textured, mixed up. And uh, it takes a long time to dry if you do it thick, obviously. So even just doing the thin crack on the roof still takes 15 hours or something to dry. But it's a little bit flexible, so it's kind of nice using this on, um, well, we feel it's going to be nice using it on the rock crawl. I'll see if it shrinks over time. But I think for rock crawling, it's going to be nice because it's got a little bit of flex, it's not just going to crack and pop out, so it can flex and kind of go back into the same shape being an epoxy putty. So uh, stay tuned for updates on how that goes for us. Okay guys, now that I have that sanded out where I want it to be, we have the wash that we made up earlier with the matte black Tamiya acrylic and with the flat earth. We're using XF52. I highly recommend using um, XF52. It's a really nice color. They also have deck tan that's a nice color for uh, doing work um, there's a really nice line from Tamiya of um, earth tone kind of colors and then XF1 matte black so 
Okay, so this is for the roof. It's gonna be a little bit heavier as we've added the brown and the thinners evaporated a little bit over the last couple days. So I'm gonna do a little test. Make sure I know we're putting not just straight paint on it. Perfect. Okay, so for the roof being white, and like with the body, it was a dull red and we kind of wanted to darken it up and give it some more color, so we left it on thick. Where the roof is white and when you put a thin layer on there, especially with the, uh, the brown mixed in, it's really going to um, stick and stand out. So you want to kind of do the entire thing, front to back, following your sanding lines, and then you're going to want to just quickly dab it with a paper towel before it has time to dry. We're pulling from the front of the piece to the back, maintaining the same direction. Don't forget the back. Now the thinner and the matte paint, it's going to soften up the matte paint, so you got to be careful when you dab it, take clean it off. So get your paper towel ready and then just... Dab it, pull it, wipe it in the backwards direction so you're happy with the overall look. If you're not happy with it, like I'm not with that there, we're just gonna redo the top. I kind of did a weird pull on it, had a design. <laughs> okay, so that's nice for the first coat. We're always remember guys, wanna do a couple coats let that dry up a little bit and then we're gonna hit that with another one. We'll uh, shut this down for half a second. We'll see you back here in right now. Okay, front to back, always wipe, front to back. What's wrong with back to front? Gravity, Jesse, gravity. <laughs> Extra gravity make the first one. What the, fire truck? Okay, I'm gonna go give that a light dusting in the same colors that we gave that truck a light dusting with as we can build up our layers. Um, first, all, first off, a quick layer of flat clear, and then we're gonna do the dusting. Okay guys, uh, we are almost there. Look at that. When you put the roof on that unit and you got the tinted windows, we got the wiper marks, we showed you how to do that. You measured out the small piece of zip tie, you kind of draw it out. Or if the vehicle's got wipers, it's even easier to do. You just put the tape on the window and you move the wipers up and you dot, you put a dot either end of it. Super cool, looks fantastic. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Uh, we're very stoked with it. So paint came out great. So you might notice there are some extra highlights on there we haven't discussed in the video and I figure it's just easier to wrap it up at the end of the video and show you besides using the acrylic paints and the thinner and all that stuff to add it on if you really want to set the truck off so it, it, it pops onto a level like this. Um, Timia makes these weathering master kits. They're very cheap and they come in all different colors and they're basically like a makeup uh, kit for your car. Like quite literally they are makeup kits for your car. So um, this one is uh, sand, light sand and mud color. It's literally makeup with a makeup applicator. You can just mix them up. You can see we've got it dug up a bit to make like a, a powder so you can powder it on. Now, if you get this stuff and you sprinkle it on right after you've clear coated it like we've done, which is kind of an advanced technique. That's why I didn't really care to bring it up until um, later in the video. But as I put the last little uh, layer of uh, matte clear onto it, I went over and dusted this through. And then I actually just used a sponge part to kind of brush in the areas with the dust on there. Now mind you, getting the vehicle wet won't initially wash it off. You, you really actually have to wash it off over time. It will wear off, but you can change up the look of it with these different colors for kind of different seasons and stuff. So um, these will help you bring your model to the next level of, um, would you say looks or whatever, yeah, next level of modeling for your uh, hard body. So uh, just some tips we've learned along the way, really easy to use. So these and the washes, you can have a, I don't know, I would say that looks really, really good compared to 
a stock one. There's ain't nothing wrong with stock one, let's not knock it, it's a beautiful body, but that's just pulled in a red plastic through and through, so it's got that plastic sheen to it. Now, if you were to take this apart and spray that with a matte clear or a semi-gloss clear over top of that, that body would look a lot better than what it does now. We will move into that one shortly. We just wanted to do a one-up custom. Um, I like this a lot. Um, that's all preference, right? So uh, I still got the cage to put on the top and a couple other small things, but we're going to get that done. Like, like we did the bumpers in the video already, so... Yeah. Okay, so we're going to jump in the final assembly. Um, that's all we're going to be doing for the paint details. If you guys came here for that, you could duck out now. We're going to put this together. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of makeup on the wheels so we can blend them into it. I'm going to change out the wheels and tires um, on the truck to something a little bit different to go with it. I think I'm going to try the Scramblers. The RC4 Drive Scramblers with some foams in it with some nice wheels we have for this guy. Some RC4 Drive Steelies, of course. So. Okay guys, that brings us to the end of the video. We got the truck finished. I think it looks fantastic, but of course I built it, so I'm always gonna think that. Um, we did the chop on the back as we did earlier in the video. We didn't go all the way back. We left that little bit of extra cab, and I think it looks just cherry the way it is. Bringing it all the way in, looks cool, but I wanted that little bit of extra cab. I think it looks really, really good. It gives you room. You're not just sitting at the edge of the door. You got some room in there. Looks good. Doesn't give it too big of a bed. Nice chop on there, looks good. We cut down the edge of the um, jungle gym. Made it look pretty cool. I think it is. A lot of guys are running like an angle bar and such like that. And that looks cool too, but we just want to try something different, different, right? So uh, we went with the Tamiya uh, TS something or other dull red. Uh, it's early in the video. We'll post it up um, in the comments or the uh, description, sorry. And yeah, yeah, just did the weathering treatment like we've shown you guys in many videos. We use some of that Tamiya Magic makeup on. It's looking fantastic. I'll add a little bit of that to the wheels. Let's just do that right now, in fact. Show you guys how quick and easy that is. So we're gonna crack that open with some sand and get it on the little makeup looking icon of brush thing. And you just kind of boop, boop, boop. Let's go there, boop, boop. It helps if you make these sounds. I just yes. Just want to get all around that bead lock, get all up in those in those bolts in there. You take this little frilly end of the brush, I think that's the proper term for it, and you clean it up. Look at that. Mm. Nine day difference, right? So uh, don't mind the fact we got two different rims on the truck. That's just. Uh, just uh, waiting on the method beadlocks to come for the rear. Uh, they're not released here yet. Oh no, sorry, they're they're released here yet. They're just not here yet. Sorry. Okay, so you guys get that. Anyhow, we've seen enough weathering on it. Um, truck looks great. We got the light kit running in the demo mode, so it just kind of cycles through all the different functions that the lights do. Uh, the, the light kit is phenomenal. Uh, Traxxas did a bang up job on it. Uh, we did bind it to my Disney Princess um, TQI radio. Uh, very simple to do. When you plug the battery in, you hold down the button on the ESC, then you plug the battery in, then it goes into bind mode. That is not in the manual. I was able to find that information online though. Traxxas does have it listed online so you can find it there. Um, Trucks and demo mode, so it won't drive, but yeah, looks really cool. What else, Jess? Fit and finish of this body's great, guys. Like this bumper, how it tucks right into the body on the rear like that. Like that's like perfect. Usually we're finding ways to get that in and fit together and stuff, right? And boom, right out of the box, it's happening. We got the dopey little windshield dirty wipers going on the front. We've added all the door handles and the gas cap. Last thing we got to do is paint that gas cap green because it's going to be a diesel. And uh, yeah, let's talk about a couple issues that other people were having. I found a body thing with my issues. <laughs> with binding and tires rubbing and all that. So, okay, so we got that on the TQI radio. We have it set so it's tapping out full lock, full size, massive, massive angle. Tires are not rubbing anywhere. Guys were talking about them rubbing. I'm not sure. We're not rubbing on the inside of the joint, nothing. We're not touching on the steering knuckle, nothing. It's good there. And we can do 
No binding full lock. No binding full lock. Now, we did not test that before we built the truck. We put the bearing kit in. Is there enough light in here like that? We did not test this before we put the bearing kit in the truck. We also put the hardened steel um, axles in the truck. We did the dry shafts, which has got nothing to do with that. But anyhow, um, we already upgraded the unit before uh, we kind of found out from um, a couple other uh, YouTube videos and um, people on the T-Rex 4M pages on Facebook. Uh, we're having binding issues. Uh, a couple people in the comments section asked about tires rubbing and such, and I just, we're not having any issues. So maybe it's the trail canyons are a little bit narrower because uh, the last comment was about the stock Bronco tires, which we do not have a set of. So uh, tomorrow, uh, Jesse and I will pick up our rigs and um, I'll be, yeah, we'll be picking up our rigs tomorrow and a bunch more parts and such like that. So maybe we'll test that out and kind of see what's leading to that. But I'm pretty sure a bearing kit will solve most of that because it is just bushings factory. So, and they're oily bushings. So like they need to rub before they can start to sweat oil, but they got to wear before they start to oil. That's kind of how they work. I don't like them. Um, they work great though in our T-Rex 4 tracks, our snow tracks that Jesse and I have on our trucks. You don't want a bearing in there, right? So a bushing is going to be the way to go. Uh, if you're planning on swamping this, driving in the water, driving in the winter, driving it outside, throwing it in the swimming pool, washing it, taking it in the bathtub, then just leave the bearings in it. Uh, the transmission, or the bushings. The transmissions come with bearings already in them, so that is a bonus. And they are, the, ca the cases uh, seal together, so they will keep out dirt and water and all that stuff. Well, they should keep out dirt and water uh, really good. I was actually very impressed to see that because I believe we were just talking about that in another video where another big company used to do their parts line with interlocking transmission cases and diff and stuff like that. And they just went away to the flat, smashy, bent axle, blown crap. So um, it's good to see the Traxxas is um, doing it right. So let's go crawl. You guys, same course as always. We have not reworked it yet as planned. We're gonna run the same lines we ran with the Bronco. Same truck underneath, different body. So you don't expect a huge difference, but it is got higher um, approach angle in the front, departure angle in the rear, bigger fender wells, and I don't know what any lighter up top, but let's push it. Just like it's 
It's got so much control even to like back out of something like that with the rear bumper stuck in the ground. This is rivaling some of my 10 skills. Okay, so we're gonna try to drop in here, guys, give you a quick synapse how we're to drop. So normally you'd wanna come, most guys would think about coming in over here like that, but that's gonna to wanna to push the truck into a automatic roll. I wanna keep my back axle high, so I'm gonna come in over this with my back axle high in there. So when it starts to drop into here, this guy drops into here. Let's try that. <laughs> a lot of time, a scrub with the servo will get you where you need to go without any throttle and it's safer. You would have just lost your teeth with full scale, but hey, <laughs> you made her down. Off camera drop in, coming up to it sideways. That lump right there was put there on purpose. We're gonna get that back tire hook around that time. Get that, get that weight where we want it. Ooh. Sticky. The drag brake goes on the tires. A little rock crawl in the transmission is a little growler. He's loud. You can you definitely hear the uh, larger, what is it, smaller, what is that, plus two caliber, low ratio. You can hear the low ratio in there. <laughs> I don't know what the word I'm looking for. It's probably the same pitch in here, but.
Okay guys, so that brings us to the end of our first build for our TRX 4M. Um, uh, Jesse and I get our trucks uh, tomorrow actually, um, which will be yesterday by the time you guys see this video as it's Thursday night. Um, no longer than three, four hours ago, somebody asked me Defender over Bronco. I said it's tough, blah, 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 but I'm gonna say Defender. Um, you can chop it, mod it, make it look better, weather it. You can go camel, you can go green, you can do all the different wonderful Defenders. The Bronco is a little bit new. It's nice because it's new and different, but they're literally everywhere right now. So it's kind of nice to do this. Um, once you weather it like this, you don't mind rolling it over and scraping it up with the, with your Bronco. You're going to be like, ooh, and every little scratch you're going to see and this and that. Every scratch adds to this. We get some scratches here and stuff. It all just starts to add to it, right? So plus we can come back and we can just touch it up with a little bit of the flat silver and a couple of techniques that we used over top. So I'm going to say Defender for the win. We've got no rubbing issues with the Trail Canyon tires. Also the Trail Canyon tires in 10 scale are one of the best tires on the market. Um, they are just a deadly tire. Um, so obviously in, the, in this size, they work great. Uh, these are the bead locks in the front. So we're going to try to put some foams in these. We do have foams from um, I think RSU for wheel drive or something that we can put into them and try that at least. I do not like just the soggy tire, not a fan. It works fantastic, but I bet you with some foam, the oil filled shocks, you'll take out that extra little bit of bounce you get from the tires. But the oil filled shocks and all that good stuff in there, it's gonna be butter, so. Um, okay, we'll see you guys back here next week for another sweet video. Don't make fun of my Disney Princess radio either.